This is a ride special. My name is Ngozi Alibu. My special guest uh, is and still is Charles Okuta, also known as Charlie Boy. Uh, some refer to him. Hey, cut the tape. Oh. May I be allowed to introduce myself? My name is Charles Chukwemeka Oputa, and I represent the artist popularly known as Charlie Boy, the area father, the father of the youth. Do 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 body, but one of Africa, the spiritual warrior, and the president of all frustrated Nigerians. Um, me. Yes. Ask your question. <laughs> uh, Charlie Boy, first off, um, happy birthday to you. How does it feel turning 70? Hmm? <laughs> How does it feel turning 70? Like you needed a moment to actually think through that. No, I was wondering who you're exactly talking to. You, the gentleman sitting right in front of me. Not Charlie Boy, Mr. Oputa. Mr. Oputa. Yeah. Okay. Great. So is it Charlie is that, Boy's is that age? Part of, is that part of turning 70? Is that what turning no, 70? No, no, uh, no. Are we talking know, about the brand? Are we talking about? I'm the one who's 70. You know, okay. Charlie Boy has is ageless. Hmm. I'm the one that is 70. Yeah. So I don't know okay. whether it's me you want to talk to or you want me to go go in my wardrobe and pull out Charlie Boy for you. So. All right, right now, I want to talk to Mr. Charles Oputa, yeah. who has so turned I'm 70. Here. I'm here. All right, so how does it feel, turning 70? Uh, there's occasional aches in my joints. And... Uh, I see that the strength I had like 40 years ago has kind of left me. But thank God for my daily routine, my disciplined li uh, lifestyle. So I think that helps a lot, you know, because uh, aging is, uh, is a funny thing to deal with. So if you don't properly take care of your youthful years, you you definitely will have challenges as you age. Absolutely. And would you yeah. say that you actually prepared in your youthful years? Uh, give us a, a brief uh, picture of what uh, those youthful years were like. Uh, I know that many of us actually were part of it. I mean, you've been around for about four decades now. Over uh, four only decades, have, yeah. We only have yeah. a pick of it. Give us an idea. Well, you know, every... Everything in life has its time and its season. There's a season to get buck wild and crazy. There's a season to sit down and reflect and sober up, you know. I've been there, I've done that, you know. And bought a T-shirt. So, say? And bought a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, um, like I said, you know, everything comes in phases. Mm. So there was a time that Charlie Boy was crazy. We we let him go on the bike. There was a time he he uh, inundated my premises with all his bikes, about 10, 15. But he's no longer a rider <laughs> like he used to be 30 years ago. So things change. Taste, even your taste changes from time to time. So. As things change, re you readjust yourself and you move on. So what you're saying is that things changed both for Mr. Charles Oputa. Mr. And, Charles Oputa. And Charlie Boy. Things never change for Charlie Boy. Okay. So Charlie Boy remains the same. Yes. But you're telling me that he's no longer riding the bike. Because Why? I don't want to encourage him riding the bike. Because Why is that? He, because he uses my body now. What if he goes and scratches something? and falls on the bike. I'll be the one footing the bill, and I don't think I should be doing that. And bearing the pain. Yeah, <laughs> so mm. we, we just took the bikes away. Okay, now, still talking to Mr. Okuta. Mm -hmm. Looking back at your life, would you say that 
you have done well. In terms of what you set out to achieve as a young man, as a Nigerian, as a human being, as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a musician, as um, I know you have a background in mass communication, you studied in the US. Mm -hmm. Would you say, looking back, that you can say to yourself, like uh, Frank Sinatra, I did it my way? Yeah, well, Charlie Boy did it his way. You know, uh, yeah, but that's the whole purpose of this interview, to get you more confused. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, well, for a person who believes in themselves mm -hmm. and is, is his most authentic self, I think it's a profound thing. Nobody can actually say that, oh, they're that fulfilled that they've done everything that they set intend out to. set out to do. I don't think anybody can say that. But to a great extent, I think I'm content where I find myself. I'm also always dreaming about new things to do, uh, new approaches, new strategies. And uh, you can never say, you know, that's it for yourself until the day you croak, because there will always be something uh, you're ambitious about that you want to achieve. No sooner have you done A, you want to do B, and then C, and then D, you know, because that's what life is all about, striving, yeah. striving to be better than you were yesterday, yes. you know. So, uh, but to a great extent, I... I will say that my freedom have allowed me to be my own boss, to, to put forward my own terms you know, of engagement, how I actually see things, because I like to do things from my soul, the things that really capture my soul. You know? And uh, that's why I put my all in whatever it is I'm pursuing. Yeah. Okay, now, so uh, in other words, um, no, let's put it like this. You stormed the Nigerian scene about 40 years ago. And Charlie that's a long Boy, time. you mean? Okay, all right. Charlie Boy. <laughs> let's bring in Charlie Boy now. Okay. Your alter ego, right? Yeah. Charlie Boy is essentially your alter ego. Precise. So let's bring him in. He stormed the Nigerian space. I mean, he just blew our minds, blew us out of the water, really, with his persona, 40 years ago, being a, a cross-dresser or, you know, looking different, extremely different from the ordinary man on the streets, mm -hmm. was really shocking. I mean, how were you able to pull that one off uh, to the point that Nigerians, as a matter of fact, the whole world, you know, came to accept Charlie Boy? Because that was the original intention of uh, in building the brand Charlie Boy to shock, timid, myopic, mongo packish, mumuish, analogish, mm. stupid, idiotic Nigerians out of their way of thinking, out of their mindset. Was there anything wrong I, with the mindset of the typical oh, yeah. Nigerian in that oh, time? Oh, yes. I, I used to, I remember way back, you know, in the beginning of my career, and uh, I used to sit with my father, we'd talk about national affairs and, you know, and I would ask my father, you know, why are we so incapable of, you know, thinking critically? And he would always say to me, because we're incapable of deep thoughts. So I've always known that this society is a closed society, it's conservative and somewhat sheepish in nature, you know? The Mumu within Nigeria no get rival, you know. So, and being somebody, I've always been tutored right from the get-go to, to be curious, to be inquisitive, to ask questions, you know. Even when I was little and we would have visitors in the house, you know, I, I didn't come from that kind of background that, our parents would say, oh yeah, make when I leave the room, elders are here. No, mm. we were encouraged to sit with elders. 
we were encouraged to ask questions amongst elders, even if our questions were stupid and dumb, you know. And I think that helped to build my confidence very early in life. Did that you know? have to do with being the son of the great justice of the Supreme Court? I don't know about the, the great justice of the Supreme I don't know about the great justice of the Supreme Court because okay. at the time my father was just, first he was a principal, then a lawyer, a successful lawyer. But I grew up in a home filled with love and warmth but with a lot of discipline. There was time to sit at the table, time to pray, time for everything. My father ran the house like a military barracks, you know, very, and he was a, yeah, very regimented. He was a big disciplinarian, you know, and um, I'm lucky that all that, I went through all of that, even though Quite early, I rebelled against everything. You know, why should I sit at the table at that time? Why should I eat with fork and knives rather than my hand, you know? Was there anything in particular that triggered that rebellious streak in you that made you say to yourself, no, things can't just be like this. I don't have to wear what other people wear. I don't have to eat what they eat. I don't have to appear the way they appear. I don't have to think the way they think. What exactly was that catalyst? I, 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 I don't know if it was something that triggered it. I think I've always been like that. You know, I mean, I see people standing here, I want to stand there. I, I see them doing, you know, doing something. I say, I want to do something different, you know. I think I don't think I've ever been a group soul. Hmm. I've you always... With a cause or without a cause? Well, uh, at the time, I didn't think of it as being rebellious. I just thought of it that, you know, there are other ways. You see, it's very dangerous when you have a one, a monotone kind of narrative. Mm. Because there have to be other ways. There have to be other options. There has to be other, you know, we can't just survive because this is what we've been handed down handed over with, and that's where we have to stick. I wasn't brought up like that. I was brought up to question things, to interrogate things, to ask questions, to be inquisitive, to be, to be adventurous. And you seem to have expressed that not just, you know, through your, your fashion, your appearance, mm -hmm. put it that way. Yeah. You used the instrumentality of music. Yeah. To, invade, to invade our lives, to invade our thinking. Yeah. What you call... Especially uh, my lifestyle. Yes, yeah. exactly. Tell us more about that. How did the music part of it uh, come about? I didn't really set out to be a musician, you know. Hmm. Uh, I'd lived under my father's shadow for almost 25 years, and I didn't like it. I didn't find it funny, and I didn't like it. Because I was always introduced as the son of who, who, so, so, so person. It didn't look like I had my own identity, you know. And I remember when I came back from the United States about 78, there about, no, about, I'm bad with dates. Before 1980, I'd just done my youth call. I was in Owerri, the city of Owerri in Imo State. i just finished with my youth call. My father calls me up one morning and said to, uh, says to me, here's a letter. Uh, I studied mass communication, you know. So here's a letter, go to Potako the next day, you know, look for Mr. So, 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 hand over the letter and start work. Now, at that time, every normal human being, every family, once you graduate from school, you, there was a job waiting. Yeah, there was a job waiting, you know. So you can imagine his disappointment when I said, I, 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 didn't, I didn't have that discussion with you. And I, I don't think I want to work for anybody. And then, of course, there was this shock in his face and he looked at me straight into my eyes and said, okay, since you want to throw your life away, what is it that you want to do? That you really want to do? There, yeah, what is it that you want to do? And I had to look for something to really piss him off because um, up till that point, 
I've been pissed off with the way he had punished me. It looked like I was the one that was always being punished among my siblings. Are you saying that your, your rebellious streak was actually... Oh, it got me effect, into trouble. It was, yeah. it was, in effect, rebellion against your dad. Yes, you, I think... You represented I, conservatism, you yeah, know, establishment, yeah, prim and proper. Yeah. And you didn't want none of that. No. I wanted to be a free spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I always saw him as being very conservative and very narrow-minded. <laughs> With the benefit of hindsight, would you maintain that stance, looking back? No, I think my father added so much value to my life. He was the greatest teacher. In fact, all those things that I rebelled against are the things that I've run back to, you see. You know, so um, all's well that ends well. Mm. You know, and... Uh, you so know, let's, when, let's talk yeah. about the music a lot more because with that you you really um, you know stamped uh, made your mark you know beyond the rings you know your fashion and all of that mm -hmm. let's talk about the music um social consciousness and using music like fella you know to well you know like i said uh, let's not run ahead of ourselves okay. now uh, like i said when i now told him what I wanted to do. I didn't plan to become a musician. I don't know how to be, you know. And I still don't see myself as a musician. Oh. Yeah, I see myself see as an... I think a musician is somebody who can read and write music and play music. And sing? Well, singing don't sing make you a musician, you know, really. I mean, anybody can crow. Sure, you know. I remember one album, uh, a song like "Any Monkey Can Play Guitar." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that song? <laughs> yeah, long ago. Long ago. So mm. you know, after I had made that known to my father, my break actually came when he was now made a Supreme Court judge from Oweri. He had to move to Lagos, mm. so from Oweri. Coming back from America, from where I moved inside the village. So you did you the know, exact opposite. I did the exact because I, I I had enough of his nagging. I didn't want to be. I mean, I'm a grown ass man, so I had to look for my own way, and uh, I wanted to start with somewhere because I had no money. I had no car, mm. so I had to start somewhere at least have a decent kind of uh, accommodation, you know. So. Me and Lady D, we we opted to start from the village. Lady yeah. D, of course, is your wife. I mean, I'm yes, not even talking yes. about all of this without talking about yes. Um, Lady D. And that was where I started the Charlie Boy brand, started my music career in the village. How easily did she blend into that village life? I, mean, I don't know. I, I, I in the beginning, girl, in the beginning, to the village. That was that was love right there. I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't know this thing you guys call love. I think okay. I think for her, it was she was excited because that's the first time in Africa. So I don't know what she was thinking. Whether it was she was watching the Blue Lagoon, because she, we would always go to the stream. There was no running water in the house. There was no no electricity. So we'd always go to the stream to take a bath, you know, and fetch water wow. to come back to the apartment and. A lot of nights, no lights. I didn't even have a generator. That was how bad it was at the time, you know. But I saw her those days. She was always whistling, always busy with a little handcraft and things like that. And sometimes I used to think that something is really wrong with her. Why? Because here I was trying to put things together Fine. and things are really f falling apart. No money. Some days we went without food. A lot of days we went without food. Mm. Just because I had to sort my, I, have to, I, I just had to find my own way, yeah. whatever way that is. And you have both been together how long now? Going to 42 years. 42 years, mm. all of 42 years. I mean, that in itself, is, it should be the topic of a book you know, that talks about how uh, a young woman, you know, would leave all her comforts to follow this African prince. 
All her comfort. Yeah. Do you think, you know, in, in today's world... She may have been more comfortable here than this. A little, so. a little, a little more. <laughs> um, today's young, maybe Nigerian woman or any woman any, from anywhere would be willing to uh, follow a man to unknown places. Women are women all over the world. Whether black, green, yellow, women are the same. It's not because she's from Yankee. Women are women. Mm. Okay. In terms of... So if, if someone feels that, you know, if they feel good being around you, they'll be around you. Mm -hmm. Whether you're from the moon or from Jupiter or wherever. And what's been the secret of your staying together this week? Just friendship. Mm -hmm. We have good friendship. We have mutual respect for each other. And we've all decided that we'll die here. I mean, yeah. We are loyal to our, our vows, as difficult as it is. I've always said that marriage is management. It's not about, you know, when people talk about love, I say, yeah, I, I really don't know what that is. But I know what commitment is. You commit to something, I mean, your soul, you're loyal to that thing. You see that thing to the end, you know. So if that's what people call love, then so be it. Now, the story about Charlie Boy's breakthrough in life is fascinating. He's the son of a respected Supreme Court justice who had strongly opposed his choice as a musician. You, of course, uh, heard that earlier if you've been following us uh, on the show so far. Now, he was able uh, to create a new image, more confident and superly charged to deal with societal issues blessed with a wife with nine children and 16 grandchildren. Uh, he has continued to enjoy tremendous support uh, from them over the years. Now, he truly has so much to be grateful for, even as uh, he clocks 70 years of age. Uh, before we speak to him again some more, here are his friends wishing him a happy 70th birthday. I was struck by his power, his charisma, his energy, his commitment, his purity, and I wish him a very happy birthday um, and many, many more, as we say here. Um, you're an amazing person. I feel very, very lucky to have the honor of having met you, of knowing you, and of calling you a friend. Thank you and happy birthday again. Happy birthday. May God bless you. Honestly, I am honored to know you. I am honored to be called a friend of yours, a colleague, and a superstructure of your in, intending ignorance metamorphosis. May God bless you, and may you, if I say God bless you again now, it will be overdose. Just keep it like that. Happy birthday, sir. Please join me in wishing my brother, my friend, Charles Kukuta Alliance, Charlie Boy, a happy 70th birthday. The name Charlie Boy invokes a lot of things in people's minds. But I know for one thing, Charlie Boy, one day, is an enigma. He's one of the most creative persons I ever met in my life. I wish you well. And keep on doing what you're doing. You're looking well for 70. We'll celebrate you more. Day one day. Happy birthday to you. You're a living legend. Listen, you have paved the way for so many people. You are an icon. You are amazing. You are unique. You are fashionable. You are a family man. You are amazing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. I just want to wish Baba happy birthday to you, sir. God bless you, the vampire area father. Baba not the old, Baba you look 40. Baba what's the secret, please? Tell us the secret. Happy birthday to you, sir. You've been an inspiration to a lot of people. And I pray that may God keep you alive, you know, to reap to enjoy the fruit of your labor. One of the things I, I admire about uh, Charles is uh, his commitment to his family. Uh, despite um, 
the deviant lifestyle that uh, people know him for as uh, Charlie Boy. He's been able to separate that Charlie Boy brand from uh, the man Charles Okuta. I, I wish him a happy 70th birthday. Happy birthday, Charles. Happy born day, Charlie Boy, Charles Oputa, CB, Charlie Man, Ubuagu. You can continue. You can just continue and be calling him. He doesn't like injustice. He doesn't like corruption. He doesn't like nepotism, tribalism, bad governance. Ye ye people, lie lie people, all these things Charlie Boy not like. So, and people where they see himself, people where they look Charlie Boy, they, they think say, na him look, na him. No, 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 no. If you sit down with him, you know, say, he's very, very humble, very nice and humble person, really. It is officially your birthday week. Happy birthday to ya. Hey, happy birthday to ya. Hey, happy birthday, area father. Mwah! All right, so Mr. Charles Oputa, should we address uh, Charlie Boy now? Because Charlie Boy is the musician, is he not? Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, I am correct. Okay. Guess. Now, um, one song, I, I was listening to it, uh, you know, some days ago, Potter Potter. In spite of the seeming theme that talks about the rot in society and all of that, mm -hmm. I noticed that there's some level of positivity that, you know, where you said Nigeria go better again. Yeah, Does that mean because... you have hope that in spite of the seeming uh, rot in the system, both at the leadership level and society as a whole, there is some glimmer of hope. Talk to us about that song. What exactly inspired it? Hope is what every normal human being should have. And of course, regardless of how bad things have gotten in our country, I, I'm still hopeful. But that ain't going to happen without uh, uh, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of consequences for our docility. I our inactions over the years. Sacrifice on whose part? Sa even on the masses' part. Mm. Sacrifice for keeping quiet. Sacrifice about their docility over the years, like I said. Mm. Their inaction. Because a thief is a thief. And if we're all pussyfooting because my thief is better than your thief, what are we really, do we really want to change things? Because if the average Nigerian is waiting for an opportunity when his own person will get into governance mm -hmm. so they can continue the chopping. So when would, does that ever end? You know, it's amazing. When, when we came into the, uh, your, your premises, mm -hmm. you, you have uh, this small uh, reception area and some two uh, photographs actually caught my attention where you were wearing the mask. And I was like, mm -hmm. did he just take this, you know, That yesterday? picture was taken like about two years ago. Two years when ago. When it was part of the picture in my photo exhibition where I was, the statement I was trying to make was that I, ha I was wearing a face mask. I covered my face because I didn't want the pollution the, of religion of ethnicity and all those things that have kept us down. I didn't want to be polluted, my mind to be polluted, you know. So, so you wear hence mask. the mask, yeah. That's amazing, it's almost mm. prophetic. Yeah. Did you foresee the times that we live in now? A time when the whole world has to I don't mask, know about the mask off? No, I don't know about the whole world, but I know about my own immediate environment that with the rates of how we're going, we're not going to last long together as a unit. As a nation? As a nation, no. It's not possible. It's not possible to have this kind of injustice and 
you know, and you still remain a unit, it's not possible. But I know that our own tipping point is coming. Like you can see the crisis America is involved with right now. For 200 years, 300 years, they've been killing black people. The white cops have been killing black people. But there was something in the death of George Floyd that was kind of different. And the whole world took attention. Became the catalyst. Yes. So I think that is the beginning of something as far as America is concerned. Now, our people, you wonder why we can't even stand up for our own rights to defend ourselves? Why we're always so afraid of dying when we're born to die? Because I've never seen anybody get out of this life alive. Absolutely. Okay? So, as a result of the fear, fear mumu in us, mm -hmm. nobody wanting to die because maybe they want to hammer tomorrow, they want to marry a, a new wife, they want to buy you know, a new house. Is that they why can't... Nigeria is the way it is? Because of course, that is of part seems, of because each we... One seems to be hoping that the time will come, you know, if I fight corruption today and I get into office, if I get into political office, how am I going to be able to use that office uh, for myself? So, yes, that's... so the, the spirit to actually fight uh, to a standstill doesn't seem to be there. Yes, that's the concept of uh, my thief is better than your thief. Mm. Yeah, because it's like most of us are just waiting to get in there or to know somebody who is in there so we can continue the looting, the chopping, the corruption, you know. Mm. And uh, how is that going to work? But I do know that our tipping point is about to happen and it's going to happen this year. If people go to my Instagram page, Area Father, A R E A F A D A, Area Father One, they will see my, my prophecy for the year 2020. Oh, you do have a prophecy? Yes. I hope we'll and be I able said, to hear it. I, and I said from July and August, things will be so terrible here because we've allowed for too long, over six decades, we have allowed criminals yeah. and people who shouldn't be anywhere near leadership, especially from the military regime up until, to, now. Up until now. We have, we have allowed riffraps to get into a position of power. Right, you now, know, it's you know, becoming impossible to, to, to get rid of them because these are people who are demonic, who can go to uh, any length to stay in power. And one thing that really angers me about the youth, I don't know where they're getting the idea that one day this set of Yahoo people will call them and say, oh, we've had enough, come and take, come and take leadership. It's amazing you call the, the people in leadership the Yahoo boys. Uh, they are the ones actually calling the youth the Yahoo boys. Well, you know what? No, they are the biggest uh, Yahoos. Let uh, yeah. Let's listen to uh, that very, very uh, interesting uh, song, uh, Poto Poto, from Charlie Boy. <laughs> Rise up 
man take his command. Uh-huh. We they see them, we know they blind. Uh-huh. Oh. We must fight for our right. Oh. Uh-huh. Anyhow, anyhow, man must die. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. This next level. <laughs> now, hot water. Buckle up. They just they do what you yeah. yeah. See them with their big belly. Then go they use religion to cause plenty confusion. Sometimes the tribalism, poverty and nepotism. When hunger fire person, you go weak, you no go fit talk again. Today, today, I say, please go blow. Fire on your go open there. Masquerade the face go show. Wow, uh, Poto Poto actually says it all. Uh, but for me, the part that I'd like to take away from there is that Nigeria, there is hope. Nigeria will go better one day. And we hope that it's going to be sooner than later. Charlie Boy or Charles Oputa. <laughs> Say yeah, you know, whichever one that is appropriate for the moment. I don't know. Very great <laughs> song there. But, you know, we're talking about the uh, long enslavement of the, the, the black uh, race over time. Incidentally, you were born on the day that uh, uh, on June 19th, it's called uh, June team. <laughs> very, very uh, interesting. You think that is a coincidence of some sort? So is that the spirit of emancipation? I don't know. You should ask my mom. The spirit of emancipation. You should has, ask my mom about that, all of that. That sort of like, you know, found itself in you. And it seems that all of your life, you have really been all about emancipation, yeah. about freedom, mm. about people you know, moving away from the norm, which really hasn't paid off for, uh, you know, for them. Mm -hmm. Which was why Charlie Boy was invented, mm -hmm. to, 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 to sort of tweak the mindset. Because you can't, uh, how can you talk about making progress with the wrong set of thinking? You don't know what processes are. Uh, you're that ignorant to how things work or how things should be. But really, what would it take to change this mindset to make the average Nigerian? When we start to promote good, in my own days, yeah, we always asked if an elder sees you in a wrong neighborhood where you shouldn't be, the first question is, who is your father, who is your mother? They don't ask that question to know whether your father or your mother has money, mm. but to know the kind of home you come from. And in our days, when we were born, we were very high on values and principles, things like that. Now, all that seems to have uh, been thrown out of the window. Mm. Is any which way possible. And the people that are more respected now even if they're idiots, even if they're criminals, are people who have money. Nobody cares to know how, how you made the money. In my own time, we didn't even know who had money, but we know the people who had integrity, who were honest, who were like the leader in their community. And everybody strived to be like that person, to be truthful, to be honest, to have integrity. That was a set, another set of value system that worked at the time. But after the Civil War, something changed, something snapped. People forgot about those values, those, 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 that bonding with, you know, as a family that held us together in those days, you know. So no wonder the youths are the way they are right now. Because government has failed them, community has failed them, parents have failed them, because parents don't have the kind of time, you know, they had when our parents were alive, when we were, we're all able growing to up. Multitask. Yeah. While they were working, yeah. they were taking care of yeah. their own fronts. Some parents are not even paid their pension, so how they go take manage? Mm. How they go take manage? And that's a question that every 
uh, every Nigerian seems to be asking. Mm -hmm. How people go manage? Let me bring it down to that uh, level. How people go manage here? If people the go to... That we live in, yeah. You know, it's said that, you know, a, a people deserve the kind of government it gets. Yes. Maybe it's yes. a society that has not been able to re-engineer itself. Yes. With the kind of business yes. that you've been, yes. you know, uh, bringing and that's out why, over the years. And that's why we come with a different set of messaging. When the campaign of Amumu, mm -hmm. Amumu don't do, when we introduced that campaign, it was during electioneering time. Yes. And what we wanted to tell young people is that, listen, your stupidity should be enough. The money you're accepting from these politicians, okay? These are people who don't care for you. They ain't going to do anything for you, okay? You take this money, but it's not going to change your life. Are they listening? They are not listening. Okay, so after the election, the result, they called the re result, they wrote the result in the room, and we have what we have. We didn't have any hand in it, I can assure you. Mm. So we decided to tweak that campaign to now we be government. Because if a slave, like I said earlier on, if a slave does not understand the concept and the precept of freedom, they'll forever remain a slave. But really, what is freedom for the Nigerian? What exactly for the Nigerian, what, what I think freedom, freedom would be for them is the, 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 the gospel to stand up to their rights, to know when they're being, being unjustly marginalized, to be able to speak out to be able to be their authentic self. I say Nigerians are very fake people. Wow, that's a They're very, very statement. arrogantly ignorant kind of people. They're the most arrogantly ignorant people I've met so far. And that's saying a lot. It is. Full of pretense and fakeness. Okay? Because, like you said, the leadership didn't come from Ghana. Mm. Yeah, amongst us now. Yes. So does it mean that a lot of us are criminal, criminally minded, like these people? Is that what it means? Yeah, that's part of it. And until we change that our mindset that your thief is better than my own thief, until we change that mindset, because a thief is a thief. What's going to bring that about? A lot of people have been talking about revolution. Some say common sense revolution. Some uh, say well, revolution. Some well, say since our mumu is so. Because Amumu, to me, appears like, say, Nafolokom, factory fitted. Hmm. I'm not sure I say I'm Nigerians happy. are most idiotic people. They're stupid. Even for those you think that, you know. But there are a few people that I've met, hmm. I'm privileged to meet, who are outstanding. A why lot of. Why don't those people make up the majority of the. They can't because they're in the minority. Like somebody like me, can I join these rogues and do like they're doing? No, I can't. I'd rather die first. And there are a lot of people like me who exist in Nigeria. So my job as an area father is to look, fish them out and see how I can help get them together. Because I still believe that the salvation of this country lies in the hands of his exceptional people. And those people are the youths. Is that your I don't care whether they are in uh, Guarimpao mm. or in Ajegunle uh, or in, 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 uh, in uh, Canada or in America. Because how explain to me how a young Nigerian will leave this environment and as soon as they go abroad, they start to they flourish. flourish, they start to blossom. Why? Because they're in a better environment that allows them to dream dreams. So Nigeria's problem is more of an environmental thing. Leadership. Mm. And you know, you stay in a shit hole long enough, you start to smell like, like shit. One. All right, you know what, you talked about uh, Mumu Don't Do, and I know you have an album uh, titled, or oh, is it a, a mm -hmm. track? Mm -hmm. A track. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Mumu don't do. Is that, yeah, is that, that is dropping today oh, with uh, featuring, wow. yeah, featuring Orisha Femi. Yeah, okay. To keep asking that question. All right, Una you know don't do. Abi ona own na factory fitted. Ona own na follow come. Ona go they do the same thing. Look at now. Look at youths. They are running. They are doing Big Brother Nigeria. Is that what's going to help you? A youth way youths way no day where then they plan their future. How do you think you have any future in this contraption called Nigeria? It's not possible, man. When you know they when then they plan the future. When you know want you know send you know care. So how do you think you are an equation in that future being planned? That's why they don't care for anybody. Great questions there. Food for thought. All right, let's listen to Mumu Dondu. Uh, great song there, uh, Mumu Don't Do. And I wonder if you have an answer to the questions that Charlie Boy just asked a moment ago before we played that one. Your Mumu never do. Charlie Boy, <laughs> it looks like our Mumu never do, really. It's what unfortunate. What would it take for our, for our Mumu to do? I don't know for you people, though. <laughs> What's I don't know. Us? What's I, holding us back? Is your, I think it's the ignorance that is holding a lot of people back. Ignorance that's been weaponized. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, because oh, I've yeah. heard phrases like the weaponization of poverty, yeah. of ignorance, yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So how do it's we... It's systematic. How, when I say we, how does a young Nigerian, because they are the ones now. I mean, we keep saying uh, the young people, the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. <laughs> are we even walking the talk as far as that's concerned? No, for now. For now, no. But the youth still remain our only hope, okay? And that is why I'm concentrating, because I've been privileged to meet outstanding young people in this country. They may not be that many, but the ones that I've met have, in fact, given me hope. Now, is for them to get themselves together. I've been talking to a lot to the people in, in diaspora. Last okay. year, I visited about, uh, about eight, nine countries. We have uh, a large majority of Nigerian people there to hmm. talk to them. And how have they been responding to your message? 50-50. Uh, Some people feel like, oh, they're tired of Nigeria. You know, they are good where they are. Uh, many of them feel like that. Many of them think, surprisingly, the ones that just left a few years, they think that uh, we're so full of it, we should sort ourselves out. They're in a good place now. But, you know, like I always say to them, you guys have loved ones and relatives back home, and you do send money. And for some people, they have three, four jobs, working their ass off to make sure 
that the people they left at home are comfortable. The money that they remit back to Nigeria is bigger than the money we get from oil. About so billion dollars precise. Dollars so it should be your prerogative in wanting to know how the country you left behind could be fixed. Because where you reside right now, now some people may come the way before you are able to stay there and stay there comfortably. They fought for making their system and their environment better for you to come and express whatever. So let's think back home and know. So when I say exceptional youths, like I said, they don't necessarily have to come from Guarimpa or Ajegunle. They can be people who have somehow blossomed since they left the country who are abroad. Earlier, you used the word sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That seems to be missing. Or would you say that is what is missing when it comes to whether it's a Nigerian back home or Nigerian? Yeah, because we've lost our, our values. To, to go through the, uh, the pain and the rigor of, of building. You know, we always talk about the national cake and nobody seems to be uh, ready to bake that cake. Yeah, because when leaders and elders have corrupted the mind of young people, that the young starts to feel that is any which way possible. In my time, we promoted hard work. We promoted honesty. And like I, I said, if you promote goodness, goodness will flourish. Spread and flourish and yeah. multiply. If you promote evil, that's what you're bound to get. And since after the civil war, we've promoted criminality. And that is why most of the youths are, are messed up. You, you've mentioned the civil war twice now in the course of this uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. are, are you saying that that uh, is what has led to the sorry pass, for want of a better word, and for why Nigeria, that's, that's for why Nigeria when I started to find itself? Yeah, because that's... there was talk about, after the civil war, there was talk about reconstruction, the three hours. Mm -hmm. that, and, and I've heard people say without that, maybe we may never have the kind of mission or country that we desire to have. Do you, do you agree with that? I don't know what to agree with anymore. You know, but what I know is that after the Civil War, a lot of things started to go bad. Families were not what they used to be. Even men were not what they used to be. They had been broken? Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? And it looked like things turned around 180 degrees. So that is why I'm always mentioning the war. Uh, the war for the average Igbo man, I think it traumatized the average Igbo man, as far as I'm concerned. You, you know, they the say that leaders foresee, leaders are able to project, you know, uh, very far and all of that. And one would have thought that all of these years, recognizing what the problem is, and what Nigeria's problem is, and even the solutions that you would have maybe, you know, found yourself in politics? Me? Yes. Well, it's just like telling a footballer to become a musician. Hmm. There are certain things. God, God gave each and everybody a gift. As long as you know what your own gift from God is, that means you're living your life on purpose. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you can't be everything because politics is raining. You want to go and become a politician too. I'm not a politician. I don't know how to say something in the morning. It changes in the afternoon. And in the night is another thing totally. Politics I don't know does how not to allow do for that, does it? No, but that's what politics is all about. At least the Nigerian politics. Mm. Because you can never trust them. Because these are riffraffs. These are scumbags. Men with no integrity. Their words don't mean nothing. Charlie Boy, one question that I need to ask is what you think about this present administration? Uh, a government that came into power saying we will uh, secure Nigeria, we will make the economy better, we will um, end corruption. And based on all the goings on now, you're hearing about rape, even by celebrities. 
there's rape, there's insecurity in the northeast, every corner of this country. Kidnapping is on the rise, banditry and what have you. What are your thoughts? When you have incompetent idiots, nincompoops, riffraffs in position of power, that can be dangerous. I don't recognize this government. They are not here to lead, to show anybody the light. They're here to propagate and activate a certain agenda that is as barbaric as they come. These are not leaders, they are rulers. They are juntas. I see them like the mafia who are just vying for territory, okay? So the show of strength is that you have acquired other people's territory. That is their show of strength. These are gangsters. They, they don't have the basic fundamental of what leadership is all about. And they're not here to lead. They're here to complicate our life. They're here to pepper Nigerians. Not only do they not know what they're doing, they don't care to know what it is that needs to be done to fix Nigeria because they're what, incapable. What needs to be done to fix Nigeria? No, don't ask me okay. because I'm not the one in Asorok. But these are not the people that we need. These are not the people. They don't have any intention of fixing Nigeria. And like I keep saying, people should go back to my, to my, to my Instagram page and, and see my prediction. Because the docility of so many decades will come to roost. We say, we the thing say, we don't see problem. We never see you. This is not supporting. Because the in the next... What are the specifics of what you predicted? Because our famine is going to start this year. There will be scarcity of food this year. You will have the money, but you won't see the food. Our money is going to be furthermore devaluate, devalued. And you will end up a situation that happened in one African country where you can carry a carton load of money only to buy one loaf of bread. Even before the COVID came, is it injustice will I talk about? Is it the hopelessness? Is it the poverty? There's so many things that are, that are eking the common man. And these people, they don't see us. They don't see Nigerians. So what they you're just... is that since 1999, that we started this democratic exper experiment or experience, if you like, that the most talked about dividends of democracy, we have not... Which kind of nonsense dividends? Where you see the dividend? Dividend not for their pocket. Is it about you? Even the common palliative for this coronavirus thing. Mm. Nobody then chop all the money. You can be so insensitive that the last food of the common man, you could still remove them from your mouth. Doesn't that tell me about your demonicness? Evil people? Until Nigerians say to themselves, enough is enough. If they don't, they will end up one day saying they rather die than keep living because life would have gone back to the, in fact, it's, that's where it is now. Animal, animal farm. Very scary projections there. Very, They're very, very scary. Very, very troubling too. Yes, but that is the reality I find on the ground. We'll end on a good note. It's been a special, a rise special with Mr. Charles Okuta, also known as Charlie Boy. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Ngozi Alib.